Hello, this is Jennifer Steckel from the Direwolf Project. Thank you for joining us. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Combs Wolf Dog, or Parksville, on Victoria Island in British Columbia. There's more news coming out about this wolf dog. If you haven't seen the other videos, this is an updated video for our previous videos on this particular wolf dog. They're calling him WD-40 because he eludes them everywhere he goes. He's very intelligent. They've set traps out for him and he avoids them. He doesn't go in them. He's finding food on his own. And if you haven't heard, he has attacked one dog, causing $11,000 worth of vet costs. And then he actually took a dog out of the hands of its owner, killed it, and ate it. Go look at some of our other videos because we describe the incidents there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the problem that is going on in this particular province in Canada. Now, I don't know if all provinces have the same laws for wolf dogs, but in this particular area, a wolf dog is not considered a wild animal and therefore it is not under the jurisdiction of the federal enforcement. Some people were hoping that the British Columbia um, SPCA would become involved and help take this wolf dog out of the area. But unfortunately, the BC SPCA has reported to CHECK, which is the news agency that is updating about this particular wolf dog. Uh, they have reported to check news that they their hands are tied because of legislation, because of the category that this wolf dog is in. He doesn't fit in a wild animal category, and he's not a domesticated dog. And so the, he's kind of like in no man's land, and unfortunately, nobody is stepping up. The organization that is working to actually capture this wolf dog and get it to safety is an organization called FLED. They find domesticated dogs in the area, but unfortunately this wolf dog is outsmarting them and because it doesn't react like a normal dog. And so they're not able to capture it. This wolf dog, WD-40, which is what they're calling it, or the Parksville wolf dog, or the dog and comb uh, on Victoria Island in British Columbia. Okay, those are all the same wolf dog. Uh, he appears to be a high content wolf dog. He lopes like a wolf dog. He looks like a wolf dog. And, and so the problem is that he's confused and he'll approach people because of his dog side or maybe his Ra he's been raised with people. He was abandoned by a person in September of 2023. And so he knows people, so he will approach people, but then he will attack. So right now he's not attacked any person, he's attacked dogs. Will he escalate? That's the question that people are asking right now. And hopefully he will not. Hopefully he'll be captured before then. But, but the problem is, and the reason why I'm doing this video, is because he doesn't fit in any category within the law. So really, the problem in British Columbia is they need to change the law, and nobody is clear on what the law should be. And so you have certain people who say, no, wolf dogs should not be treated like wild animals. They have domesticated dogs' um, ancestry, and so they're not wild animals. 
which is the way the law is right now. And we can all see from this problem with the Parksville wolf dog that it's not effective. It's not working. Okay, there's something wrong about that. Because he's not acting like a domesticated dog, he's not able to be caught by people who do find domesticated lost dogs. Well, so the law right now is not working. If he were treated like a wild animal, the authorities could go out and tranquilize him and get him subdued and then pull him out. But because he's not a wild animal, they can't do that. They don't have the authority to do that. And so they say, you know, our hands are tied sort of thing. Well, so the BC SPCA has decided that, that the law prohibits them from entering. Uh, the Conservation Center from British Columbia, they've said they can't go in and do anything because it's not a wild animal under the law. According to the law, it, it falls under the jurisdiction of animal control. Obviously, that's not effective. It's not working. Um, they have shut down that entire area after this incident where the 17-month-old French Bulldog Ocean got eaten, clutched out of the hands of its owner. I mean, it was gruesome. So the designation of him being a wolf dog is the first problem. The BC SPCA has the authority in the province to intervene in cases of domestic animal cruelty, neglect, and distress. Well, in my opinion, this is neglect. This is neglect. The owner abandoned the wolf dog. That's, to me, the definition of neglect. So I don't understand why they're saying that they can't go in, but, you know, so that all hails under the Preventions of Cruelty and Animal Act. So wild animals fall under the provincial jurisdiction of the Wildlife Act. Is the British Columbia SPCA calling this wolf dog a wild animal? Because according to the law, it's not a wild animal. So I don't understand are they just trying to make something up so that they don't go in or like i don't i don't understand exactly so again let me read it exactly to you so that you can hear it for yourself the designation of wolf dog is the first issue the bc spca has the authority to intervene in cases of domestic animal cruelty neglect and distress under the Prevention of Cruelty of Animals Act, right? That would be if it, it is a dog. It's not a, it's not quite a dog, is it? Maybe they don't feel like this is neglect. I don't know, but to me it is. Wild animals fall under the provincial jurisdiction of the Wildlife Act. So he's neither dog nor wolf. Well, that's the problem with wolf dogs in the first place. That, that's 100% of the problem of breeding wolf dogs. They're neither dog nor wolf. So they can't be classified as 100% dog. They don't act like that. And apparently they can't be classified as 100% wolf or wild. Okay, I get that. But if, if there's no designation for a wolf dog in the law, because he's not a dog and he's not a wolf, then who the heck's authority is it to go out? And the other thing to me is, why do you have to have authority? This is a menace to the community at this point. At, at this point, it's an emergency. So when an emergency happens, you deal with it, and then the consequences come later. Okay? But you have to get the public safe now. Who cares what the law says? Get the public safe. And then deal with the law because obviously the law is not working as it is written because of a situation just like this. So the SPCA explains like this. Here's the quote. 
It is important to note that the Wildlife Act does not currently apply to hybrid and wild domestic animals. You know, that that's the problem. It doesn't currently apply to them. Well, it should. It should apply to them. Okay, so is it going to take the community to rise up? If it does, then the community needs to rise up. They need to speak to their legislature and get this accomplished because this should not be happening. Like this is the last time this should happen. Like we should learn from this and say, okay, you know, there's a problem here. This wolf dog doesn't fall under e either jurisdiction. We've got a gap in our law. We need to fix it. And it needs to happen now because it's an emergency. <laughs> The good thing is, however, that the SPCA has stated what they believe. Listen to this. The society has long advocated for the inclusion of all exotic and wild domestic hybrid animals in the controlled alien species regulation. Aside from their risk to humans and other animals, there are serious animal welfare and ecological concerns associated with exotic and hybrid pets and i would agree with that i don't i haven't read the controlled alien species regulation and again i'm not from canada so i'm not quite sure about that particular regulation i think we should definitely look into that in, on this channel and see where that leads us and if that law could apply to wolf dogs then maybe that's where we need to go next is figuring out how to add wolf dogs to that particular thing. And if the SPCA is also on board with that, then we already have advocates. I think that may be a right way to go. Okay, so this may be where all of this stems from. Listen to this. At the 2023 Union of BC Municipalities meeting, they had a meeting in 2023, a resolution was put forward asking the province to ban all hybrid animals that are lower than fourth generation. Fourth generation means that there have been, you know, four rounds of breeding amongst themselves without going back to the full wolf. That could result in a whole bunch of different percentages, however. So, I mean, heck, if you bred a first generation to a first generation, you could get full wolf in that. That's a second generation, but you could get uh, technically, you could get a full wolf in temperament in that second generation. And if you bred that second generation that's like a full wolf back to a, uh, another one that's a second generation that has a very high wolf-like temperament traits, you could keep the wolf-like temperament traits even if it is a fourth generation. It depends on what the breeding facility actually keeps to breed in those generations. So I disagree with that. I don't believe that there can be a generational anything because you can't count on the breeders breeding for dog-like temperament. They may not know how to breed for temperament, you know, because a lot of wolf dogs, you know, it's all about owning a wolf and having the look of the wolf. In order to breed for temperament, you have to disregard completely what the dog looks like in order to gain the temperament that you need. I really would not put my trust in wolf dog breeders to breed appropriately for four generations. So no, I disagree that four generations should be the criteria. Wolf dog breeders have a long sordid history of lying. They, they lie to the public all the time. In fact, there are wolf dog breeders out there right now that say, oh, my dogs are domesticated. I mean, just look at the Tamascan dogs said that. You remember that? I don't know if you guys know that, but back in 2007, the wolf dog without the wolf was their big slogan. Well, it turns out 10 years later, oh gee, sorry about that. We were actually breeding high content wolf dogs into the line. And then they had this big reveal where all the pedigrees were changed and then they actually had the real high content wolf dogs in the pedigree. Are you gonna trust that? Are you gonna trust a wolf dog breeder? with all that sorted past. I mean, that's just one example. There are lots of other wolf dog breeders out there, right? So no, I'm not gonna trust a wolf dog breeder to breed four generations for specifically temperament 
when that's not what they're selling for. They're selling for a wolf dog that looks like a wolf. Okay, they would like the biddable temperament. They're not going to breed a non-wolf looking animal because that's what sells for them. So unfortunately, I'm not going to rely on their integrity. I'm just not. Wolf dog breeders notoriously lie and cheat to, to sell the dog. So no, I don't think four generations is appropriate. Is it better than now? Maybe. Do we have to go there first in order to get where we want to go? I don't know. I think we should advocate for all wolf dogs if they have any wolf content at all based on DNA. They should be DNA tested. Um, any wolf dog breeder should be registered with the, with the state, or in this case, the province, the community. Wolf dog breeders should have a license that can be taken away if they are caught stealing or lying or something. Um, and then all wolf dogs should be uh, tracked either with the tattoo, if not a tattoo, a an ID chip. And then owners should be written down. Like all of this has to be public knowledge. And you have to be able to track that wolf dog throughout its entire life. Okay, because that's part of the problem. All of this stuff is under the radar. We don't know anything. There's no information. We don't know who the owner of this wolf dog is, and we don't know who this wolf dog is, and we don't know who this wolf dog was bred by. We have no knowledge of this animal, so we don't even know its content level. You know, I don't understand why somebody is not out there right now tranquilizing that thing and getting it out. Like, how hard is that? I don't know how hard that is. I've never done it. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. I seriously don't know. I'm asking the question. How hard is that, though? Can we go in and do that, thereby not killing it? You know, I can imagine people in that community are pretty fed up. I mean, I certainly would be if I had kids or dogs. But man, that'd be a terrible situation to be in right now. So, it's not considered a wild animal. It's considered a stray animal. Okay, get that. Get that, you guys. Legislation needs to change here. <laughs> This is not just any old stray animal, obviously, because it's not going in any of the traps. It's very intelligent. So, because it's a stray animal, it falls under the jurisdiction of animal control. And the BCSPCA does not have a contract for animal control in the regional district of Nanaimo, meaning it can't step in. It doesn't have a contract there. Right? The, the British Columbia SPCA is opposed to the keeping, breeding, sale, display, or trade of hybrid wild animals, including exotic species such as wolf dogs, savanna cats, zorses, which are horses and zebras, and other wild domestic crosses. And I absolutely 100% agree. The SPCA goes on, the society actively encourages the adoption of legislation, regulation, and policies that prohibit their import importation, breeding, display, and sale to protect their welfare and minimize their risk to the environment and human health and safety. I 100% agree. The Direwolf Project absolutely agrees with the SPCA in this case. Um, wolf dogs should be banned. Wolf dog breeders should not be allowed to breed and you know that's the ultimate if wolf dog breeders could no longer be a thing and wolf dogs were banned that would be awesome that's the best but this is a billion dollar industry okay so that's probably not likely gonna happen although we can work toward that but if it's not going to happen, we need to at least have very strict regulations. The SPCA says Coastal Animal Control Services of BC. So again, get on the phone, 
talk to these people, call them up saying, what the heck are you doing? Let's get this done. Do you need volunteer help? If you're in the area, volunteer. But Coastal Animal Control Services of British Columbia has the local animal control contract in the RDN. The Mounted Police, I guess, RCMP, has been assisting due to the multiple successful attempts at evading capture. So again, they're, they're unable to capture him. I don't think you should try to capture this wolf dog. You need to tranquilize it. You know, it's just not going to be caught. So you've got to treat it like a wild animal. You just have to, unfortunately. It's not pretty, but it's an emergency situation. You got to do what needs to be done for the community. And hopefully they can do what's right for this wolf dog too because here's the thing when a wolf dog is born it is our obligation as a community in fact it should be the breeder's obligation but you know they're wolf dog breeders so um but it's our responsibility as a community to make sure that that wolf dog is placed in the right environment so if the breeder can't do it and first of all, they shouldn't be breeding and they should be like their license, again, license to breed wild animals, okay, should be revoked, especially if this continues to happen for that particular breeder. That's why you need to be able to track. If you were able to track a particular breeder was producing wolf dogs that kept going to the wrong homes or being abandoned or whatever, then yeah, that wolf dog breeder is a problem. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't track. So anyway, that is the SPCA and why they are not allowed in. And so it's animal controls jurisdiction. That's where we need to go. We need to get on the phone and we need to talk to them and we need to put up a stink. Right? So again, they are coastal animal control services of British Columbia. They are the ones with the local contract. All right, thanks for listening. And I'm gonna do another update too because it appears that the owners of Ocean, the 17 or 18 month old French bulldog that was eaten by this wolf dog, they have an update. So look for that next video also on this channel. All right. You guys stay safe and well and warm, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.